It's Angela, the inquisitive farm wife, back in the kitchen again. Today's video was part of Cozy Casseroles, hosted by Sammy over at Managing the Maze. Today is the day where everyone is dropping a video at the same time. So if you like casseroles like I do, and you enjoyed my video, go over to Sammy's channel, check out the playlist, because there's gonna be a lot of creators today putting out lots of different casserole recipes for you. Hey, by the way, if you're new here, I'm so glad to have you. I like to do lots of from scratch baking, vintage recipes, canning, preserving in all ways, you know, freeze drying, dehydrating, it goes on and on. I have a great backyard hobby homestead where I milk my own cows and goats and just do all kinds of stuff around here. And I am so glad to have you here with me today. I was at a thrift store recently and I found one of my weaknesses, church cookbooks. So no, this isn't the church that I went to. I don't even know if it's one that's local to me, but somehow it was donated at a local thrift store and I snagged it up. I think I must have paid 50 cents for it. It looks brand new. I've got a recipe ear tag. We're gonna try it together today. I've gotta to get supper on the table. Under tuna, it's called potato chips and tuna hot dish. Let's give this a try. I tell you what, these church cookbook recipes are always just so delightful and I can always count on them being good. So I'm excited to give this a try. Well, the first thing I have to do is I'm supposed to butter this pan, but we're cheating today, and I'm just going to spray it with some of this oil. I think it'll work just fine for that. And I'll sit that out of the way for a second. I'll show you the rest of my ingredients. We need a can of cream mushroom soup, and it called for peas. By golly, I looked all over those cabinets. I couldn't find it, so today, instead of using a small can of peas, we're going to use a just a regular size green beans. I know, peas and tuna, they go so well together, but today it's gonna be green beans. And then, folks, this was a little bit of an eye opener here. If you haven't seen what's going on, it called for a can of tuna, which was supposed to be seven ounces. And if you look close here, this is a five ounce can. I only have one can in the fridge or in the cabinet so this is what we're gonna have to deal with so that's okay a little more green beans a little less meat it'll be fine and then we need some potato chips these are just store brand potato chips nothing special I've got a cup of my farm fresh milk I'm gonna go put this in the microwave and get it started it's supposed to be hot while I was over there at the microwave I went ahead and started the oven we've got to get this preheated to 350 degrees I'm gonna go ahead and open that tuna. And cream our mushroom soup. Green beans. I'm gonna take both of these over to the sink and we're gonna drain off the liquid. So it called for about a half a pound of chips. So it's a regular size chip bag, but I happened to grab the family. So we'll just use half of it. And what we want to do is we're going to layer this baby like a lasagna. First we're going to put in some chips. And then we're going to put in some green beans. Oop, that one went rogue, didn't it? Probably maybe close to half. Do the same thing here with the tuna. I'm going to try to use about half of it. Then another layer of the classic potato chips. Whoa! Good thing I've got clean counters, people. Clean hands, clean counters. That's how we cook around here. And we'll do the rest of these green beans. And the rest of this tuna. You guys, it's killing me. This recipe doesn't have any cheese in it. And I am a cheeseaholic. Something tells me I want to put another layer of the chips on here. So let's go ahead and put a little bit here on top. All this. I 
I'm also trying real hard not to crush them because it didn't say to crush them. Use this same fork here and I'm going to dump this cream of mushroom soup out. You could probably get away with doing the low sodium because those potato chips are going to have a lot of salt. I noticed it didn't call for any salt or pepper. I suppose you could add that at the table later, but I'm used to I'm used to adding garlic and parsley and all sorts of things, but we're going to follow the recipe today. Okay, I've got this. Got my hot milk. I did about two minutes in the microwave. Depending on your microwave and your strength. And we're just going to kind of whisk this together here. Blended really well. So all we have to do at this point is just pour it over the top of the casserole. Okay, now it didn't say to cover it or anything. It just sent out of the milk and bake it 350 degrees. Into the oven it goes. See you in an hour. Here it is. Ooh, that didn't look too bad. Let this cool for just a little bit. I'm going to get some carrots as our side and we'll Give this a taste test. Fish this up and see what it's all about. These are some home canned carrots with some salt, pepper, and garlic. And that's what's for dinner tonight. And shall we give it a taste? I'm not sure, like the potato chips underneath. I want to get both that and on top to see texturally what this is all about because I'm guessing that those bottom chips got soggy. Hmm. Just another tuna casserole in my opinion. <laughs> What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, we're in the kitchen again. We are going to make a second casserole. And I am going to kind of make one up as we go. That's kind of how I cook. So you got one with a recipe and one with a, we're going to use what we got today. And I have myself an acorn squash. And so that's not going to be enough to feed my entire family by just stuffing it. I know it's, it's orange, right? They're supposed to be green. That's why I really need to get this used. We're going to make an unstuffed acorn squash casserole. This will be fun, guys. I'm so glad you're here with me today. All right. One of the other things I don't have on hand is sausage. And the only one that my family can all agree on is beef. I usually make my own beef sausage um, five pounds at a time. But I didn't have any thawed out. And I do have hamburger thawed out. So what we're going to do today is we're going to just make kind of a quick sausage. Add all the ingredients that you would normally see in just a simple mix. It's salt, pepper, garlic. I'm just going to throw the rest of this jar in there. I'm going to be generous with that. And then some onion. Ooh, real generous with that. And then sage. That's what really gives it that sausagey flavor. So we're going to go ahead and put some of that in there too. And I want to get that started right away so that all these flavors can meld. Usually I like to let it sit in the fridge for a couple of days. So we're just going to mix this up and set it aside while we work on the rest of the project. I have cut my acorn squash in half. I've started deseeding it. And then here in the Instapot we have two cups of water along with a trivet. And we're going to go ahead and Pressure cook that for seven minutes with a 10 minute natural release. So it became very obvious. I don't think that's gonna be enough squash and I happen to have a butternut, which I've rinsed off, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and peel, whoops, peel that off. 
peel off some of this skin. I don't like the skin. I don't mind the skin on an acorns blush, but I do not like it on butternut. So we're going to go ahead and peel that off. And we're going to cut this up. And we're going to add it to the Instant Pot also. And we'll just have a squash casserole. This is what it's all about, guys. Just use what you have. Cut right here where the bell is. And this is all going to be flesh and meat. And so we can cut it up a bit. And then this one we'll cut in half. And we'll pull out those seeds just like we did on the acorn squash. Next step we'll work on is our stuffing. If you were to cook this as the directions say, you would take this, put it on the stove with a cup and a half of hot water. But instead, we're gonna take this and about a half a bag, so like, I don't know, three, maybe possibly four ounces of cranberries. I'm using the cherry infused ones today. And to that, I'm just gonna add a can of broth to this today. It's not quite two cups, so I think it'll be about perfect by the time we have our cranberries rehydrating in here. So we're just gonna let this set to the side. I wanted to show you that that broth was soaked up, no problem at all. So we've got this ready, and to this I'm gonna add, I just had caramelized some onion Oh, you know, when you chop um, onions for a recipe, you might as well go ahead and just chop up a bunch. And the same thing, I had the pan warm, I might as well go ahead and caramelize them. So I had some caramelized onions already. and um, But normally what I would do is I would cook it with the sausage. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go brown the sausage. I have... A nice size casserole dish and I'm going to try to transfer whoop, our squash over here Woo -hoo -hoo. and we're just going to kind of let that sit and cool for a minute so as our sausage is cooking I'm going to go ahead and add some other ingredients here to our stuffing mix I just think little bits of apple would taste really good in here way I've done it in the past and been super happy with it. This apple's been in the fridge a little while. It's gotten nicked a few times and so you know we need to cut out any of the bad spots. But this makes this perfect for putting inside something you're going to cook because you can easily cut around all that stuff. Now I'm going to get out some walnuts. I don't measure very much either around here, guys. It's a handful of this, it's a dash of this, it's a pinch of that, a splash of this. So, I'm going to say probably close to a cup of chopped nuts. And I'm just going to kind of rough chop them. Add this to my topping. And lastly, I want some Parmesan cheese. And I'll probably put close to a cup of that in here too. kind of fold this all together okay so let me admit behind the scenes I went back and forth on whether or not I wanted to do this step and I've decided I'm going to usually I add some egg because typically I would put the um, sausage in with the stuffing mix and then I would Put the egg in there as a binder and everything but today we're going to kind of layer things differently so i was hesitant on whether or not i would need the egg and you know what i think i want to add the egg so grab just a couple eggs and we're just going to kind of whisk these up real quick here 
I think I might regret it if I don't. So we're gonna add this one more thing to our bowl. Hopefully it'll fit. Okay, and we're just gonna mix this in too. I just think I'll probably be happier with it in the end. It won't maybe be quite so crumbly. We were able to squeeze that in there. It just gives it a little bit more moisture and a binding agent. So there we go. Okay, now it's had a chance to cool. Um, I'm gonna kind of pick through, make sure there aren't any hard spots. And if the skin wants to come off easily, we're definitely gonna take it off. And it seems to be about like a pumpkin would. I got to thinking after I went ahead and baked it, because this is an older squash, it might have a tougher skin. So let's go ahead and get that peeled off real quick. You could substitute any squash for this recipe, really. I mean, I, squat, I like to make zucchini boats and all kinds of things. So like if you have some delicatessa or maybe even pumpkin would work good for this. And I'm just gonna kinda mush it. I actually have a potato masher and I'm just gonna mash this up. That'll help me find any skin bits I might've missed. And it's gonna help me blend that butternut in with the acorn. Typically I wouldn't like this quite so soft, but I mean, I did cook it in the Instapot versus, you know, the microwave where I could keep a better eye on it. But I'm excited to see how this works. We're gonna kind of layer this. This is very plain bottom. We didn't do anything to this. So next we're gonna add our sausage. And it's got amazing flavor. But at this point, you could add salt and pepper to your squash. You could have added that in there. And I wanna spread this out, making a nice even layer. Add our topping. I just love casseroles, don't you? I just think this is great for winter. You know, these fall squashes, they will keep in your pantry so well. Mine would have kept better. I just left it out on my canter. But if I had put it in, you know, a dry, dark place, they'll keep for months. Maple syrup. I know it sounds crazy, but I love to drizzle maple syrup all over the top before baking it. And this is probably going to take close to an hour. We'll just kind of watch and see how the topping does. We may have to cover it part way through, but um, I'm excited to see how this casserole turns out. Ooh, here it is. Finish this off with a sprinkling of parsley. If you have fresh, of course, that would be better. But the dried kind is good, too. Let's go ahead and dip in and see what it looks like. Nice. Shall we do a little taste test? Yes, yes we should. A cook must taste her creations. So I have a little squash that's on the bottom with our stuffing mix and there's some sausage in there. Give it a little bite. Mmm. Mmm, there's the walnut and the sweet apple and the cranberry and the squash is soft and you don't have to mess with the skins. If, if you don't want to eat them, it's all gone now. I kind of like the idea of doing this in a casserole instead of stuffing it. So I'm enjoying the unstuffed acorn squash. <laughs> Guys, I wasn't sure what my family would think of this. I think it was a hit. Everybody went back for seconds and even thirds. <laughs> I hope your family likes it as much as mine did. Thank you.